Welcome back to the second part of our ICS Cybersecurity Reference Architecture video series with Joe and I. This one is about how does it work? What are the foundational principles of our reference architecture? So Joe, why don't you walk us through it? Sure. So what you're seeing now is the most basic drawing in our reference architecture. Uh, what you have is your OT systems, uh, then you have your control systems here, and up top, you have your IT systems. So OT systems is? Our operational technology, that's your DCS system, your industrial control system, ICS, all, right. all these various acronyms. All right. So let's go through the various levels. Uh, all the way at the bottom is your level zero. That's your process, your sensors and actuators, something like this that we have here. Level one is your local or basic control. Level two is your computer systems that are doing your supervisory control, your, your DCS system, your ICS, your DCS. Level three are the operations and system management uh, systems. Level four is your uh, enterprise business systems, your, your IT network, your business LAN. And anything above that we call the cloud or the internet, your open internet, your wide area networks, uh, et cetera. All right, so I understand that these levels are, are based on the 62443 series, as we said Correct. previously. So, so Joe, level three looks a little bit different. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, we have divided level three up uh, based on the type of function that each of the systems are dealing with. So over on your left-hand side, our operations management level, uh, this is the business-related systems such as your historians or anything that is feeding data from level two up to level four, up to your business system. On the other side, we have what's what we're calling system management. And these are the systems in which uh, we are controlling or modifying the control system itself. So your patch management, your network management. Uh, basically, we've divided this by the function and the the users involved. So on on your operations management, the users may be um, business personnel in level four, whereas level three system management is your administrators that are looking to um, control your supervisory systems. Together, level three makes up what we call the secure area. Now, this is the area in which we think that we can achieve the highest security level um, you can put the most security controls against. Um, there will be less impact on the system the more secure controls that you put in place. And I would assume that we can control more heavy which people have access to this and fewer people in general have access to these systems. Exactly, exactly. Now down below that, uh, making up level zero, level one, and level two is your trusted area. This is our frame of reference for the reference architecture. This is the systems uh, and devices that we need to protect, that the secure area is providing a barrier to protect. And they may not necessarily be able to achieve a higher security level because of the various uh, characteristics of that system. Up at the top is what we call our untrusted area. Now, this is the area in which we don't have much control over as, a, as an ICS operator or a technician, and it has the largest surface area of attack. Many of these computers are directly connected to the internet. Um, you have users who don't know anything about the DCS controls, so don't know any of the secure practices and could potentially be an attack vector for your control system. So Joe, what makes the secure area secure? How do, you, how do you define it secure? The way we're making this secure is by controlling the data flows. We have our north and south firewall, which is providing a well-defined uh, electronic security perimeter. And as well, we are putting in access control lists through firewall policies uh, to control that data flow. Additionally, in our other network levels, we have the same sort of concept. We have firewalls providing a clear electronic security perimeter between uh, any devices that cross between a network level. These firewalls, as I mentioned, allow us to control that lateral data flow uh, between network levels. 
So we, we control the flow between levels. What about within levels? Within levels, we're generally not restricting the traffic flow. Um, what we do want to restrict, however, and this comes back to our key concept of the reference architecture, is we want to restrict the data flows between the untrusted area and the trusted area. So data going from or to either or and skipping the secure area. Joe, if I'm sitting in the business system, I'm, I'm ordering materials and I need to know from the production system, do we have any left? When do I need to order? If we have this rule in place, how do I do that? So this is a very common scenario where you need to pull information from a server within the DCS and provide data up into your enterprise business system. And the way that we address that in the reference architecture is through your operations management, your level three areas, in which we have an intermediary, which is collecting that data, a historian or a business management system, uh, which is directly communicating with the DCS server. Uh, and that server collects that data and then allows it to be fed to the clients in your level four. And this provides you with a secure mechanism to provide that data and it provides that intermediary where your level four uh, workstations are not directly communicating down with your level two DCS. But yet you can get that information and it can flow freely, but you are controlling. Correct. And you're controlling that through two electronic security perimeters and you're able to uh, monitor that traffic through there. So Joe, our reference architecture cannot be the only one. There must be others out there. Right. There are many other reference architectures out there from ISA 99 to the Purdue model, but many of these all share the same basic principles, that we are restricting that communication flow from between the untrusted networks and our trusted areas. You may see various things that are different, but ABB's reference architecture is built with practicality in mind. And that means it can be directly mapped to network drawings. There's no unconnected networks. Uh, there will be firewalls shown in between each zone. And like I said, we've built it with practicality in mind. Thank you.